will do like Peter did. Remember Peter and Jesus was out there playing in the water? I don't know if he playing it. He was walking on water. Mm -hmm. Amen. He was seizing the day in the midst of the storm. The boys was in there and they was having a fit. Yep. You know, all that demonstration, all that anointing, they cast out devils, healed the sick, raised the dead. They were doing all of the demonstrative things because this was towards the end of his ministry. And they still, what, they still didn't know him. They still, because they knew him physically. They didn't know him in his divinity. So when he walked on the water, jet ski, we don't know. He walked on water. Only one of them, the most braggadocious of the group. He took notice. Hey, that's a ghost. So hold on, that ain't the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus. I'm just I'm trying to light the moment up. I don't know if you guys do any Bible studies, but that's I like to make it real time. Amen. But he looked and seen him walking on water. He said, hey, if that's you, what did he say? Bid me to come. Not a lot, just simple math. Simple word. Bid me to come. Right? He said, I want to be where you are. I want to do what you do. That's what he was saying. Hey, that looks cool. That's what he was really saying. I know we read it in our language. I tell you, I'm real, I read it in real time. I read it, I'm like, dang, I, I can see people, I, I can see people say, dang, that is bad. Mm -hmm. Hey, shoot, you gave us the other stuff, I wonder if you're going to give me that one. Well. Yeah, because he gave them the ministry. Now, can you allow me to defy nature? He said, bid him to come, he said, come. And he came. And he did. And he walked in the same dimension that Jesus operated in. Until he looked around. Right? And once he looked around and noticed the storm, he started singing. And he do he said the same thing what we always say when we're in a storm. Help! Help! I'm singing, Lord. Then he make it deep and spiritual. Lord, basically, you. I'm here with you. You don't want to call me out here. I just got a glimpse of you now. I'm singing because I can't do what you can do. But and he reached out and grabbed him. If you can read, it's so many. It's so many layers in there. I'm cutting through. He reached down and grabbed him and brought him into the boat. Am I right? But he had to step up out of the boat yeah. to walk on water. Right. Mm -hmm. He went a way that he could never go. Yeah. Yeah. No other human could go, matter of fact. We have no record. And I believe God wants us to go somewhere we have not passed to this way before. Yeah. Something, you know, maybe supernatural. Maybe extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? I haven't seen enough of it. I've gotten a few things and I've participated in a few things, but I, I, it should be a norm. Because when I found we live in a certain place, we have dual citizenship. I don't know about I don't know if you know that. Huh? I'm a citizen of heaven, but I am a resident of the earth. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in both dimensions. Why is this? It matters. Because we've been living in only one dimension. And God wants us to live in both. But it won't come to you. you got to go to it. If it's you, Lord, bid me to come. Amen. When the last time you had an encounter with God that was outside of just the scope of your present experiences? 
I know we had a testimony. The guy did something fabulous, right? Mm -hmm. The one on the right. I don't want to put you on camera, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of you guys come to me and told me I've had dreams and visions and God has spoken to me. You don't have to leave that place. Yeah. It belongs to you. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And we should long to exist there. Not just visit it. God wants to bring us to a point where we understand those things, but we got to get used to living from that place. Right? Because when you understand how God works and what the Father is doing, especially with the church and how you want to bring us to become a supernatural people, and how when we get together as a collective group and our consciousness should be able to be on so 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 in a in agreement with God so much so that heaven has to show up. Anybody want heaven to show up? You just probably want to die to get there, right? I, I, just, I, hey, when it, I get there when I can. No, I'm here to tell you, He brought heaven at Pentecost to let us know. He gave us the earnest of to let us know. Hey, you can be persuaded to operate in that dimension. I, I want to be there. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do. I want to live from that place because God wants us to do, do some things because I found out that my daddy is always on the move and I want to be on the move with him. Amen. I want to be progressive. He never told us to camp out. He, know, he never told us to be neutral. He never told us to be a people of compromise. We are supposed to go after it and the reason why we go after it because there's a way that we've never seen before. It's the yeah. place in him that he wants us to go that we have not Pass this way hitherto. And I know we're going into 2024. In a few weeks, we're going to be able to make that statement. I ain't never stood in 2024. <laughs> How generic, huh? And we get excited on the nuances and, and just the possibility of having 365 days at our disposal. Right? If God is gracious enough to give us the full 365. Am I right? Amen. It's a possibility. So that place is full of possibilities. And we got to make up our mind. I refuse to go back to who I used to be. I'm not going to... See, see, when the calendar changes, most of us already make up our mind that 2023 is done. It's in the rearview mirror. I'm not going back there to visit certain aspects of uh, things that are hounding me. You know, when we started out this year, I put a little group, a thing in a group, and we had about 12 people that responded and... and and when January comes, I'm going to share it. Yes. I'm not going to put your name on it, but I'm going to put it in the group and let you know. And then when you read it, you'll know. Amen. Was it fodder? F-O-D-D-R. Was it just something? <laughs> I was just, you know, contemplating with expectation. Or did I make the preparations necessary so I can ascertain that thought? Because mm -hmm. it's a preparation you have to go through. Not just process, it's a preparation. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to prepare to go where we've never gone before. We got to do certain things we've never done before. To break the monotony of the, just the, the rigor of life. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. don't know. I only got one person, my wife. We, we, we know. But I'm just saying. See, because you got to understand, we can't stay where God used to be. And we can't be obligated to what God used to do. If you're honest this morning, you can tell yourself where God used to be is no longer producing anything for you. Right, Am I right? right? Yeah. It's not. We have to divorce ourselves from previous religious experiences. Right? Anybody want to divorce yourself? I, I do. There's some things in my life. I'm not my wife. I'm talking about certain things <laughs> that I got exposed to that I connected with or covenanted with or I came in agreement with. I want to divorce it. You got to divorce it. Even some of your sentimental religious experiences. It's not bringing life. Tell your neighbor it's not bringing life. Yeah. But the only thing that can blow, blow upon us, the only thing that can give life, the only thing that can resuscitate, resuscitate you, the only thing that can re, rejuvenate you or uh, renovate you or do anything re- is the whole work of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. He's the one 
who, who is the one who was able to give us and impart to us fresh revelation as it relates to our purpose. Amen. That's why I don't know if anybody else is as gung-ho about his role, but I know I'm a product not only of men who are led of the Holy Spirit, and have baptized themselves in that spirit, which means they submerged themselves in the purpose that God assigned to them. But I'm so, so happy that I have something or someone, not a something, or someone who has engrafted me into the family name. And he has taken up residence as the Paracletos, as the Holy Spirit who is assigned to my life to make sure that all the infirmities, all of the weaknesses, all of the flaws is swallowed up in victory. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm the, I am who I am by the grace of God. But the grace of God that is predicated upon my relationship with the Holy Spirit is in the most essence of who I am. Amen. The very substance of who I am. Amen. I cannot be who I am without the Holy Spirit's Amen. work. Amen. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying. He want to bring a freshness yes. to our walk. Yes. Some of y'all too stale. Too moldy. <laughs> Bro. Because if something gets, I'm telling you, if a wine skin, that's why, they used, you know how they redid a wine skin? You, you got to understand, first of all, where it came from. The wine skin came from goats. Yeah, yeah. and you guys, we got goats. I'm going to leave that alone. What's a goat? Fast, fast. No, no, okay, anyway. But, but in order to refresh the wine skin, they didn't have to get a new wine skin. They only had to put oil on it. And set it out for seven days. And then all of a sudden, it, it, what was brutal is restored. It became elastic. Pliable 